When a spacecraft enters any atmosphere, whether it's on Earth or Mars or any of the gas giants, the spacecraft is moving much faster than the speed of sound that's present in that atmosphere. And that means that in front of the spacecraft, you compress a lot of gas. That compressed gas heats up, and in turn, that, that hot ribbon of gas heats the surface of the vehicle. And so that's what the heat shield is trying to protect against, the, the, the tremendous heating caused by the compression of the gas during a hypersonic entry. Heat shields also known as Thermal Protection Systems, or TPS for short, are one of the most critical components of spacecraft designed to enter planetary atmospheres. One that's probably most common known, a thermal protection system, is a space shuttle tile system. And these are basically uh, mostly air, about 99% air. The rest of this is a silicaceous ceramic material. And these are very unique. You can actually heat them with a propane torch or a blowtorch or an arc jet uh, to where the surface is glowing. And yet, they're, they're such good insulators that you can hold it, the corners of it in your hand while the surface is glowing red hot. That's one type of a TPS. Another one would be uh, a system that can handle much higher heating rates like Apollo. This would be called an ablator, where uh, the material is consumed by an ablation process that prevents a lot of the heat from coming on board to the vehicle. So these are two typical systems that are very heavily used. Whether a spacecraft's heat shield is a tile-based system or an ablator, it must go through rigorous thermal testing. At NASA's Ames Research Center, researchers use one of the world's most powerful arc jet facilities to test the performance of thermal characteristics of heat shield materials. An arc jet is essentially a, a very specialized wind tunnel. What's specialized about an arc jet facility is the kinds of energies that we're trying to generate. What we're trying to do is simulate re-entry heating. And so we pump a tremendous amount of electrical energy into a stream of flowing air. That accelerates the air to hypervelocity speeds. It heats the air to extremely high temperatures. And when that energized air stream is, is sprayed on a test model, that's a very good simulation of the kind of heating that a spacecraft sees when it comes through the atmosphere during re-entry. The reason we do arc jet testing is because a heat shield is a critical part of the spacecraft systems. Any spacecraft that passes through an atmosphere requires a heat shield, and the heat shield needs to work the first time. There's no backup heat shield on a spacecraft, and so if the heat shield fails, that generally fails the mission. It obviously endangers any crew or payload aboard the vessel. We do a tremendous amount of arc jet testing because these heat shield materials can really be tested in no other way. And so by testing them in arc jet facilities, we really assure that we understand all of the properties of the heat shield and all of the behavior of the heat shield before we actually fly it with a crew or a payload. By injecting massive amounts of energy into an airflow, an arc jet generates plasma. It is this complex chemistry and its interaction with heat shield materials that researchers are studying in order to improve our understanding of how to design effective thermal protection materials. Plasma diagnostics is a way to understand and to get information about this plasma that we create to simulate these heat loads. There's a whole bunch of different ways of doing plasma diagnostics. If you have a probe, which is measuring the heat flux, for instance, in this plasma, and you bring this probe into the plasma flow, this is kind of plasma diagnostics. The diagnostics I do is more optical plasma diagnostics. We want to get information about this hot gas, about things which are happening close to the surface, and uh, it is not very useful to use probes to do that, since you will disturb the flow field. I'm measuring the light that is emitted by the plasma, and I split up this light into the different wavelengths. The plasma spectrum itself is not a continuum spectrum. It contains many, many different emission lines at different wavelengths, which means we see emission at one specific line or a couple of specific lines. And finally, these lines are very specific for the different atoms and molecules that are in these, uh, this plasma. You can imagine that as some kind of a fingerprint of the different atoms, which means 
oxygen atoms will have different lines than nitrogen atoms or copper atoms or nitrogen molecules. And you can use these lines and the intensity of these lines to get information about the state of the plasma in terms of temperature and particle densities which are important for us. By generating plasma flows of varying temperatures, arc jets are able to simulate atmospheric re-entry conditions for spacecraft entering into various atmospheres at various trajectories. This allows researchers to design and test entry systems for a broad range of NASA space missions, including future missions to Mars. Imagine you're coming from the Earth to Mars. The first thing you need to do is to insert the vehicle that's going to land humans or land their cargo into orbit about Mars. And here you're coming in uh, at an entry speed that gives heating environments that are about a factor of 10 greater than those that the shuttle experiences on its return. So the first part of the mission is to do an orbital insertion about Mars. The second part of this is after you've lived in, in the orbit of Mars, perhaps as long as six months, to wait out a dust storm, which commonly occurs on Mars. Then you do a, a, a retro burn, analogous to what a shuttle does, and do an entry into the Mars atmosphere. And you must transition from an aerodynamic shape to a retro propulsion shape, where you have uh, perhaps a lander that lands on its tail. So you have to go through these uh, various stages. The TPS challenge is to have a single thermal protection system that can undergo that 10 times the heating environment that shuttle does on the first pulse, the aero capture maneuver. Then on the second one, you've got to set, take something that's about a factor of four higher than uh, shuttle does. What we're looking at currently is what we call a dual heat pulse, dual layer thermal protection system. And uh, our concept that we've recently validated in some arc jet testing is to put uh, underneath an ablator, put an insulating material like the shuttle tiles. So what we've done is combine two fairly high technology readiness materials together to solve the problem. Going forward, research conducted at the NASA Ames ArcJet facility will continue to play a vital role in the development and testing of new thermal protection systems for both manned and unmanned space missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond.